the pandemic made America, which was already weak, weaker. Let's discuss that. When the pandemic happened, I was talking about things that no one wanted to hear about. You should, you're at home, you should take this time, you should improve and upgrade your skills. This was the message. You're getting this government money, you're getting enhanced unemployment, many people, and this is something else too. I remember talking to my banker, and this is one of the things that she was talking about. She says, the number of people coming in to open up business accounts was staggering. Why were they opening up these business accounts to get this EDIL money and to get this PPP money? And in the beginning, to get this money, you didn't really have to prove nothing. They just gave you a ton of money. And one of the things that happened is, I would say with the six trillion that was disposed into the economy, it's estimated that up to two trillion went to fraud. And this is more to what made America weak. Years ago, there was a guy they were, who bought some lottery tickets, right? And the news reporter was there with her microphone and she says, hey, if you win the lottery, what are you gonna do? And the guy was like, I'm gonna get some hookers and blow. That is the average American mindset, hookers and blow. And this is why so many people, like the number of people who are going to jail for the PPP fraud, for the EDL fraud is crazy. The number of people who are going to jail for that. and. Essentially, what happened with the pandemic, instead of people buckling down and doing the things that they needed to do and doing the things that would have made their lives better, they were smoking weed, playing video games, having sex. So this made the weak weaker because this is something else that's happened. 2008. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, we had a massive recession. There was no TikTok then, but YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook existed. How many videos did you see of people talking about how hard it was? Zero. Why? Because America was a different place. The pandemic is the reason that we have all of these people who are running the TikTok, and literally, uh, it's just like, I'm gonna stop eating, it's just too expensive, too expensive. The pandemic just made a weak nation weaker because some of the stuff I've seen in these videos is laughable. You know, people talking about like, uh, the one that's been making the rounds about the woman who apparently works in healthcare, talking about she lets a dog out and everything and how stressed she is. The reality is stress in America is a normal thing. It's normal, but because that some people had what I would call a two year pause, a two year pause away from real normal responsibilities. And this is one of the reasons that we're gonna see some of the craziest things that are getting ready to happen. We're gonna see some of the most, I would say people are unprepared for the reality of the economy. Like I said this, and I'm starting to see this. I said this a while ago that a lot of people who felt that they were safe, they were secure, they had a good job, they were gonna wake up, they were gonna go to work, they were gonna get that, hey Ed, they wanna see you in the boardroom, and you go in the boardroom and they're laying you off with your little severance package. This is starting to happen more and more and more. Because now, we don't have that six trillion stimulus package in the economy anymore. What we have is the real economy. And the real economy is not gonna play with folks. The number of people who are getting evicted here in Atlanta, Georgia is staggering. The courts, the sheriff and deputies who are the ones who process the actual eviction are 2,600 cases behind. Now what's happening? Every month there are new evictions. There, the landlord files an eviction notice, they go to court, the court says you have your eviction, then they turn it over to the sheriffs and deputies who are already backed up. 
I would not be surprised if we're behind 3,600 or 4,000 evictions by Christmas time. So what's happening? These people who have been formally evicted by the courts are still in the house, still not paying rent, probably doing damage. And this is one of the things that I have just has puzzled me. Anything can happen to anyone. You may run into part of a hard time where, you know, you may be in a position where you might be getting evicted or you may have one of these situations, right? What is the point in destroying the property? I don't understand that. Okay, you you got this property, you live in rent free, take care of it. But no, there's this serious mindset to destroy stuff, to mess stuff up. I saw this with my rental car business. The worst people, the worst renters would trash the cars, leave the cars on the empty. I don't know what it is, but I think that's another segment of the demo people because all demo people are not the same. And I know for a fact that I had demo people renting my cars and not paying me and just trashing the cars. I am fortunate and like, I'll, I'll speak on this. I was only in the rental car business, let's say seven-ish, eight months, and I just completely stopped renting cars and I started selling them. I do believe if I had stuck it out, because I was making money, but here's the thing with the car rental business is it's a high hassle business, very high hassle. You've got people who will rent your car, then something to go wrong with it. Who are they gonna call? They're gonna call you because it's your car. Oil changes, and you know, like I said, the number of people who are getting the, who, who I had arrested was staggering. And you can make money renting cars, but know for a fact, and I would say going in the future, the number of people who have car rental businesses are gonna see more incidents, they're gonna see more crimes, they're gonna see more damage because people are now at a point where they're getting desperate. We're gonna to start to see desperate people do desperate things and take desperate measures. And one of the things that is happening, cause you know, there's a lot of talk about bricks, right? Bricks, Brazil, Russia, India, South America, and some other countries, right? And there's a lot of conversation about bricks and how that's gonna impact the American economy. I find it to be foolish to be worried about bricks when you can't fill up your gas tank. To be all over bricks, to be studying that stuff and you can't fill, out your, get, fill up your gas tank, you can't do the things you need to do to start establishing yourself here in America. I find it to be highly, highly funny. But going back to how the pandemic, and I'm gonna go through the steps of how the pandemic made America weaker. The first thing that happened with the pandemic was we got hit with this thing. We got hit and it was like everyone stays home. I remember now for me, I've been working from home for years. So it was no big change to me. It was just the same as normal. But I remember getting on the highways and seeing very few cars. Like I'll be on the highway. I'll be on 285 in the middle of the day and there may be me and six other cars, six. It, it was crazy and there was restaurants that were open. Waffle House was open and I would go to certain things. With this situation where we got hit and Congress, in my opinion, I feel overreacted with the CARES Act. They just literally started throwing money into the economy and people took advantage of this money. People took this money to buy cars. We'll talk about that. Car prices went to the moon. And these people were using this stimulus money to buy these cars. And now there's a problem with cars. People who bought cars in 2020, 2021, 2022. Now the price of cars. Now, fortunately, I sold the majority of my cars before prices just literally crashed. Prices just went bananas. And Fortunately, I got rid of most of them before because right now I have some of these vehicles because I was selling vehicles. I went to Car Carvana and I went to CarMax and they keep sending me these. Your car is now worth like I, I had a Porsche Cayenne, right? Uh, I sold it for like 19. I got a notice from Carvana 
that now my Porsche Cyan is worth $7,000, $7,000. I was so glad to sell that when I did and I paid 24 for it. So if I had held on to these cars, I would have lost way more money. I would have had way more issues. I would have had way more situations dealing with the, this things. Yet a lot of people who bought these cars paid market adjustments and now they're stuck in these cars because they owe way more on these cars than what the cars are actually worth. And this has created a very different marketplace. Uh, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, their dealership parking lots are overflowing with cars because they can't sell them. And this came because of the things that happened during the pandemic that resulted in what, we, what I like to call the new economy, the real economy. Right now, we're dealing with the real economy. We're dealing with real economic measures. We're dealing with real economic forces. And this is where we are. And this is what we're dealing with. And this is what's going on. And this pandemic, if you just look at all of the things that happened, all of the things that went down, all of the things that occurred during the pandemic, and you look at what people are dealing with today. Also, this is another area where people became weak getting in your car and going to work. That has become an issue. That has become a big issue. Everyone wants to work remote. Everyone wants to work from home. Now, granted, there are some remote jobs, but here's the thing. And for all of the people who are gonna come for me, it's like, well, productivity went up. Uh, go to Google and go productivity from remote work and you will see a litany of new data saying that pro productivity went down. And I'm gonna tell you why it went down. I had a friend who was talking about her experience with her insurance company where she had to make a call to customer service. It was clear that this woman was working from home because there was a baby screaming in the background. There was a dog barking and there was some other stuff that was going on during her whole conversation with this customer service rep. This is one of the things like you got a lot of people working from home and they have their kids at home. So they're taking care of their kids while they're at work. This is huge. This was huge, huge, huge for a lot of people in the lower social economic strata that, hey, I can work and I can watch my kid. This is a big, big reason that a lot of people want to work from home because they can create their own schedule. I know someone who is she took complete advantage of the work from home situation. Now for her, she's a high tech worker. If she was to get fired, she could go off and hang up a consultant hack and make double the money that she's making now. So she's not really worried, but essentially I just saw this person create a different schedule. Went to, woke up, let the dogs out, worked at the 12, took a nap, then three o'clock left, went to the gym. She was able to do her own thing, create her own schedule. And a lot of people did likewise. A lot of people did the same thing. And this is one of the, the, the reason to work from home is because you get to create your own schedule. You get to create a certain level of freedom. This is why so many people want to work from home. This is why the work from home thing has become such a massive, massive situation. And right now, one by one, Elon Musk, all these CEOs started, they, they saw the real data. They knew that they had people on the payroll who were getting paid for 40, but were working five and six hours a week working five and six hours a week. And I guarantee you, if something was messed up with their paycheck, you would have a problem with that individual. They would be mad, even though they knew for a fact they did not work 40 hours. They would be mad, because see, this is the thing. When you tell someone that, hey, you're gonna get X, Y, and Z, and they don't get X, Y, and Z, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have a problem. Even though the person did not fulfill their side of the obligation. So. We're going to be having more little chit chats about why the pandemic made America weaker, because this recession, which I don't think it's going to it's going to be different. This recession is going to be very different from 
the last recession, which was precipitated on real estate. And this recession is going to be a totally different animal. It's going to be something that's going to be very different because one of the things we didn't have in the last recession is these high interest rates. And these interest rates, I do believe, will go up again in November and go up again in the December. I need to look at the data to see where inflation is because they're trying to get inflation down to 2%. And this in 2024, I do believe they're going to meet their goals and they're going to get inflation down to 2%. You're going to see massive layoffs. You're going to see massive pain. And you're going to see a lot of other things that are happening in the economy that are going to be critical for people to be well taken care of and to be able to take care of themselves. So you're going to see a very different animal because now the people who were harmed by the pandemic causes and actions, they will now have to redesign and readdress themselves and put themselves back in the situation to become a normal, hardworking American, which is going to be a big, big deal. It's going to be huge because one of the things that was going to happen is that people have to reorient their minds. And another thing that's caused a lot of stuff is people saw and tasted luxuries once tasted become necessities and they saw what their lives could be like, what their lives could be like, and they don't want to let that go. And this is why you have this battle with employees getting them back in the office because it's like, I don't want to go back to the office. I want to keep working remote. I want to keep having my lunch and watching my soap operas and doing the things I've been used to for the last two years. I don't want to go back to work. I don't want to go back to work. No, 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 no. And you know what? If you're going to make me, I'll quit. And I'm going to take less money so I can stay at home and have this cozy lifestyle that I've created for myself. This is what's going on in America. And this is why the pandemic made America weaker much, much weaker than it was before.